Uh, ladies and gentlemen, good morning, and thank you for those who are watching for your time so we can walk through the Ontario vaccination rollout plan. And what I want to do are just several things is, first of all, walk through where we are right now, where we're going in the very near future, that is to say, March, and then the, the plan itself and how we're rolling it out, and then talk to the calendar itself and about where the blocks of ages in particular fit in going forward based on the vaccine supply. Right now in Ontario, we're just over 600,000 people vaccinated, more than 250,000 people who have completed the immunization program, that is the second of both needles, and are therefore immunized against COVID-19. We're averaging 15 to 18,000 needles a day, and this is a ponderous time for us when we're actually taking the vaccine to people, to groups of people, to small populations, as opposed to having people come to mass vaccination centers for the most part, and of course, that's more time consuming, more difficult to do, and slightly slower than what we would want. But we're averaging 16 to 18,000 per day, a little bit more on some days, and we will pick up that pace in the next several days here going forward. And, and then as we open up the mass vaccination sites after that, the pace will pick up quite dramatically. Where we are right now is that we are focused very much on revisiting the long-term care homes, the high-risk retirement homes, the elder long-term care facilities and offering the second needle in the program to the residents and to those in the essential caregivers and the health care workers and the staff who work in those homes who have had the first needle. The residents have all been offered that opportunity in those long-term care facilities, high-risk retirement homes and elder care facilities. The uptake was phenomenal amongst the residents with more than 90%, I believe, who received that first needle. We're well into now bringing the second needle to them. At the same time, we're continuing with Operation Remote Immunity, and many of you will recall that that's our operation to bring the vaccine and the opportunity to get vaccinated against COVID-19 into some 31 isolated fly-in only communities, mainly along the James Bay, but in Northern Ontario. We started that operation in early January with some small amounts of vaccines being brought into the communities to vaccinate using the healthcare professionals there to vaccinate some residents and staff in three smaller facilities. That was completed. We vaccinated a group of people healthcare professionals and the logisticians who would take those vaccines into the communities. They've completed the immunization program and three weeks ago we started rolling teams, six teams a week into those communities. We vaccinated now more than in more than 25 communities. We have more than 8,500 vaccinations that have gone into our arms and again the uptake has been actually phenomenal. In many communities the uptake is almost or at 100 percent. In only one or two communities uh, was there a lower uptake than that? So absolutely excellent. And we have now started, in fact, second doses in some of those communities, the ones obviously who received the first doses earlier on. We want to continue rolling out to our First Nations in a prioritized group as, the, as Deputy Batiste with the regional chiefs and the leadership uh, of First Nations and Indigenous adults have, have stratified those communities most at risk. We want to start getting to. We are doing that slowly. We will pick up that pace. And also at the same time, we have already started in some small numbers getting the opportunity to vaccinate the urban indigenous because they are in our groups of mo those in most vulnerable circumstances. That takes us through to the end of this week and to early next week. Then on the, on the first week in March next week, we will go into what is truly a transition phase as we transition out of phase one with our first two priorities are those in most vulnerable circumstances and our healthcare professionals, our healthcare workers, to get into phase two when we have larger doses, larger numbers of vaccines arriving in Ontario. So starting next week, we will focus very much on completing those long-term care homes, the high-risk retirement homes, the elder care facilities, and retirement homes across Ontario. And if you just think of the numbers, that's about 626 long-term care homes, more than 775 retirement homes, with more than 100,000 residents in those combinations, and we want to get the vaccination program complete in that. We will start or restart, if you will, the vaccination program for our healthcare professionals. And we are really gonna focus on the patient-facing healthcare professionals who stand the greatest risk of contracting COVID-19, getting sick from COVID-19, or or pa passing COVID-19 on to others, and that is a large group in and of itself. And we will continue with Operation Remote Immunity, and we will get into the communities in First Nations and the for the Indigenous adults. We will get into the communities at the highest priority, those at most risk, and in the other communities, we will do the elders in, during the month of March, or we will start it, get a large part done, and complete it into Phase 2 itself. So there's where we are right now, and there's where we're going over this next month here. And the, 
and the numbers of vaccines now have steadied somewhat and that allows us to plan going forward in a way that we could not do before. And our plan is a provincial plan. You see it, uh, you see it on, the, on the placemat, if you will, as we call it behind me here. We've graphically demonstrated here and we've laid out the plan. This is our missions to efficiently and fairly uh, do the vaccination rollout for the people of Ontario. We've walked through the allocations of how we will do it out across the province. The allocations will be done largely by population percentage. We will work in a small risk factor there so that we can take advantage of the work that the Science Advisory Board has done where they delineated that certain age groups and certain neighbourhoods are at much higher risk and we want to be able to respond to that and get into those more risky areas and help the populations there more quickly. And we will keep in that allocation a small, what we call strategic allocation of about 10% starting from 1 March onwards. And we will have that. We will allocate it on the Friday before it arrives the following week. And that gives us the ability to respond to, be able to reinforce success, respond to disruptions or respond to outbreaks itself. We've done the prioritization uh, in that plan. And the Government of Ontario has received our recommendation for the last part of it to take us through to the final parts of phase two. And, and they will give us our direction for the task force. Priority number one will continue throughout that plan. Obviously, uh, those in most vulnerable circum circumstances uh, are health care professionals, particularly those patient facing. And, and in, priority, in phase two, as we roll out, our priorities will be those more aged, those that are disproportionately affected, and then our essential workers. In that plan, we've also brought in the coordination with the public health units, with the hospitals, with the pharmacies and working with the primary care professionals, how we need to collaborate together to roll this out across Ontario. The public health units were selected as the vehicle to do that collaboration and coordination because they bring some enormous strengths. Number one is they do vaccines. And as they say, vac vaccines are us, and that is truly the case. They do vaccines right across Ontario, and they have the expertise in it, but also they have the knowledge of the local populations, and they know the groups of people over 80, and they understand where their community is most at risk, how they can reach out to them, and how they can talk to them, and how they can get them to take advantage of the medical care available, in this case, the vaccination program that we want to roll out to them. But secondly, instead of taking the hospitals as the way to roll out the vaccination program, we also selected those PHUs because we wanted to keep the hospitals free and prepared to look after patients or people who might contract COVID-19 if, God forbid, we get a third wave and it gets worse than it is right now. And so the hospitals are usually engaged. Their capabilities are immense and we want them engaged. And not only that, every person I met from any of the hospitals said, sir, we want to be engaged. This is the only light in the COVID-19 tragedy and we want to be engaged. We want that. They're coordinating and collaborating with the uh, public health units and that's an awesome thing. But at the same time, if COVID-19 surges again, they're going to be prepared to look after people and we won't rely on them totally for the vaccination rollout. We're also working with the pharmacies to synchronize how much in the terms of vaccines will flow through them. We've completed the contracting with the pharmacies. We're doing a tabletop exercise this week, this, this coming Monday, and we'll do a small pilot across Ontario. And for phase two, the pharmacies will be ready to roll out. We probably look at 10 to 20 percent of our vaccines flowing through the pharmacies at the start, and that will probably increase itself. As part of our plan, we also bring resources to the public health units who will coordinate the collaboration uh, through, uh, through in their region of operations uh, with those hospitals, with the primary care professionals, and with the pharmacies. Uh, we're going to bring resources and have brought resources to them, money to pay for the extra costs that they have, money to pay for bringing people out of retirement and putting them back on the payroll to put needles into the arms, money for expenses that they incur in a whole variety of ways. And we're also bringing to them the online reservation system and the customer service desk, which we are now furiously working to pre do the final stages of preparation, to test it thoroughly, and then to go live with on the 15th of March. And inside of that, inside of that provincial plan, the public health units have developed their own plans. I've sat in on all of their knowledge sharing sessions where they walked through their plans, were challenged by different scenarios, took took great lessons and lessons learned from other public health units and actually prepared themselves to go. And, and, and my, my complete confidence was in making an assessment. They are ready to go. And I told the Premier exactly that. <clears throat> so the provincial plan is inclusive of our public health units. It is inclusive of our hospitals. It is inclusive of the pharmacies. And it also includes the primary care professionals. It's all hands on deck. We have asked each public health unit, with all of those resources, 
to make sure that they can rise to a minimum of 10,000 vaccinations per day. 10,000 vaccinations per day. There are 34 public health units in Ontario, and so you can do the math quite easily that given the number of vaccines that we could get, we can ramp up our capacity to put them in the arms of people very quickly across Ontario. Obviously, some of the smaller public health units would not ever get to that level because they would never have enough vaccines. And obviously, some of the bigger ones, like Toronto Public Health or Ottawa Public Health, would want to do much more. And we've said, tell us what you, what you are doing to get the 10,000. They've done that. They've demonstrated during the tabletop exercises, during the knowledge sharing sessions. And we said, tell us what, what is your maximum, and then tell us how long it would take you to get there. And in Toronto Public Health, Dr. Davila and her team have laid this out superbly, and they know what they want to do, and they're looking at a, at a capacity when all the systems are turned on, hospitals, pharmacies, their mass vaccination clinics, they've, they've laid out nine mass vaccination clinics, and the primary care professionals, that they're going to be over 400,000 vaccinations a week capable. So all those things are happening. It's not one piece of it at all. It's all hands on deck in this incredible medical system that we have in Ontario. The last thing I'll talk to you about is this, is about the booking and the systems for putting reservations in place and when your term would come in to shoot. And we've not been able to do this, quite frankly, because the vaccination supply was so, uh, was so fickle. Uh, we had such a drought for such a long period of time. Now we have received the forecast through to the end of May and, and into June, actually. And we have more confidence we'll continue in a steady stream. And we have been able to lay out a variety of, of the calendar with the groups that will come in in priority and when they should start. So as of uh, now in March, we will start with the 80-year-olds and over in the third week of March, uh, we will start vaccinating them in our province. There are just over 600,000 80 year olds and above. We will probably have to vaccinate about 550,000 of them. Some of them have been picked up before in the long term care facilities and in retirement homes, and that's really a good thing. We will start on that third week of March with the 80 year old pluses. You will be able to find out uh, when we go live on 15 March with the online reservation system and the customer service desk, a call service. You will be able to find out when you can get an appointment. If there are people who are not going to go online or can't use the call center, I simply suggest to you to become a, a vaccine concierge as family members or as community groups or as church groups and help those 80 year old and a plus reserve an appointment for themselves. The, the public health units are reaching out to them now as we speak and we'll do that over the next days here. In this next days, we'll turn on that online reservation system We'll stand up the customer service desk, both of those on the 15th of March. We will have a flyer go out to households to say, when it's your turn, here's how you will find out, and here's what you should do, and here's what you should be prepared for. You will find out by public announcements from here at this podium, to public service announcements, through the media, through phone calls, and from the public health units themselves, who again, utilizing their strength of knowing the populations in their area of operations, in their region of responsibility, they will reach out to those populations and make sure they know. So you will be able to get an appointment. So starting the third week of March, it was 80 year olds and plus. Starting the 15th of April, it will be 75 years old and plus. Starting the 1st of May, it will be 70 year olds and plus. And starting the 1st of June, it will be 65 year olds and plus, and it will go down further from there. And so those are the blocks that we're working for. When we go live on 15 March at the online reservation system and, and the customer service desk, the call center, unless you're 80 years old or unless you're acting to get a reservation for somebody who's 80 years old or more, please do not go online. You will not be permitted to go through the system if you're not in that age bracket or acting for somebody in that age bracket. And please do not call the call center. And then a week or two weeks in advance of when the next age blocks will go through, you will get the information again through the media, through the public service announcements, from this podium, and a whole bunch of other sources of information. So ladies and gentlemen, we're, we have a detailed plan for the province. The public health units are an incredible part of it. And, and if you're like me, uh, you know, before either November or December, you perhaps didn't know what a public health unit was or really where it was. So when you go to get your vaccine, the only thing I would remind you of is that you're gonna get it close to where you live. And your postal code, when you go on to reserve a vaccination appointment, your postal code will bring up the, the vaccination clinics that will be closest to your address, and then you will be able to reserve in them and go to it. And whether it's a shopper's drug mark in Orleans, Ontario, or whether it's a drive-through vaccination clinic, clinic at Canada's uh, play, 
uh, uh, Canada's Wonderland later on in the spring when the weather improves a bit, or whether it's a hockey rink, you know, in, in, in York region, uh, the Ray 20 uh, Center, or whether it's other places, the ones closest to you will be the ones brought up that you will be able to reserve an appointment. And so you will get your vaccination close to where you live. And when you make the first appointment, you will make a second appointment to get the second needle uh, into your arm and to get the immunization program complete. So ladies and gentlemen, there it is as, as clearly as we can lay it out. Everything I said about the age brackets and the date times, everything I said about that is vaccine dependent. If we have another interruption in vaccines, obviously that would slow that process. If we get more vaccines brought to Ontario, brought to Canada and then to Ontario, that would speed up the process. The last thing I would say, and I will stop then and take your questions, is the fact that throughout phase two into phase three, we will continue to work at those in most vulnerable circumstances because we know it will be an ongoing work. We are gonna make sure that we look after the indigenous adults across the province of Ontario, and we're starting that quite literally now outside of just Operation Remote Immunity, and we are gonna make sure that we concurrently work in the, into the communities of those disproportionately affected. We've got the plans in place, we've got the vaccines allocated out of the still relatively small amounts that we're getting come in, and we've got mobile clinics, in-community clinics, roaming clinics, all working to deliver those vaccines to those populations, and that will continue right throughout this vaccination program. The last part, of course, of, of that vaccine is where you would get it close to home. It'll be either a mass vaccination clinic, it'll either be in a pharmacy, or it potentially would be in a, a mini mass vaccination clinic, if I could call it that, a mini me perhaps, uh, where primary care professionals would come together, create a, a, a smaller mass vaccination clinic, and then be able to call their patients and others into that. We'll head on to that capability when we get into essential workers, and we have yet to receive the direction from cabinet on the details of the essential workers, and we believe that will be soon. We'll add on to that the capabilities of the private sector. And we have huge uh, companies in Ontario, whether it's Maple Leaf Meats or Cargo Meats or Sofina, uh, who have said to us, we know we'll be in the essential worker category. When our turn comes, we have medical support in our, in our plants. We have tens of thousands of employees. And if you can deliver the vaccine, we would be delighted to vaccinate the people who work here. And in fact, if you want, we would be delighted to vaccinate their families if it's their turn. And in fact, if you want more, we will be delighted to vaccinate the neighborhoods around if, when their turn comes. And so the capacity is there to do that, and we will take advantage of all of it. So I'll stop right there by saying our plan is in place. We're rolling it out. We're going to pick up the pace in this next couple of days, getting to those populations where we have to take the vaccine as opposed to them coming to us. But as we go forward, there will be more and more who come to the mass vaccination clinics, and that gives us the capability to roll those vaccines through in an enormous number every single day. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you. I'd be pleased to take any questions. Good morning. We'll go to the phone line for questions. As a reminder, it's one question and one follow-up. Operator, first question, please. From Mike Crawley at CBC News. Please go ahead. Apologies from Laura Stone at Global Mail. Go ahead, please. Hi there. Thank you so much. Good morning, um, Laura. General Hillier, I I'm wondering if you can talk about the booking system and why Ontario's won't be live until March 15th. We've seen in Alberta and Quebec, for instance, uh, their sites going live this week and people are getting appointments for as early as next week. So why the delay here in Ontario? Because none of the populations that are in this next four to five weeks, Laura, we actually don't need bookings for them. We're working the healthcare professionals. We're working those in most vulnerable circumstances that I talked about, obviously the long-term care homes. We don't need those people to book appointments. We have a different methodology. We're going to the long-term care homes in the hospitals and the clinics around Ontario. We're, we're picking up the, uh, uh, the healthcare professionals, those patient facing first. I stress that again, because that's a, a significant number and we want to get them that level of protection. It is not till at least the third week of March that we're into a category where we actually need bookings at mass vaccination clinics or in pharmacies or any kind of other clinic. And then we start that with the 80 plus year olds on that third week of March. So our aim is to be up and running on the 15th of March, uh, have the call center and the online booking center working at the same time. In the interim, as I mentioned also, uh, the public health units are reaching out to that population. Some have actually very few in numbers in their, in their public health unit region, and they can reach out to all of them to make sure they know what they have to do to book their appointments. So we actually don't need the online reservation system yet because we simply don't have the vaccines to be able to get into the populations 
of hundreds, thousands, and millions that actually would need the, the, vac uh, the vaccination reservation. So 15 March will work for us. I would have liked to have added earlier, quite frankly, uh, that and the customer service desk, but we, we have it almost ready. We're, st we're testing it to, making sure, to make sure that it works, and, and, and 15 March works for us to have it up and running. I would just stress again, when it goes live on 15 March, unless you're 80 years old or older, unless you're an agent or a family member acting for somebody who's in that category to get an appointment, stay off the online reservation system, please, and stay off the customer service desk call center. Thanks, Laura. Follow up. And General, can you address some of the, the criticisms around the communication of this? I mean, the, the, the big question that the public wants to know is when am I going to get my vaccine? And you uh, just very quickly kind of ripped through some ages in, in this press conference. It was hard for, uh, for us to keep up. Um, we don't know how many health professionals are participating in this, how many sites there will be across the province, how many pharmacies are participating. Are you going to present a clear outlined plan for the public and can you address uh, some of the criticism that uh, we really don't have a clear sense of what Ontario is doing? Well, first of all, we haven't addressed a lot of those things, Laura, because we haven't had the vaccines to go into the general population and the populations we've been at now, as I've said, are very specific populations. I think most people of Ontario knew that. It was the long-term care homes, the higher risk retirement homes, the elder care facilities, the healthcare professionals uh, patient facing. And then as we roll the plan out, that information will all become available. First of all, when you go online to book, it'll tell you which vaccination centers are gonna be close to you and, and you, where you can get a reservation. The public health units and their communications will talk about where they have mass vaccination centers. Toronto has already done that by saying, hey, we are gonna have nine mass vaccination centers running and here are the locations and they will start them up as vaccinations, as vaccines become available. So that is part of it. To have vac vaccination centers ready without vaccines it kind of complicates the picture if you try to communicate all of that. Those communications will come. Be assured that when you come on to visit, to book your appointment, you will be given the vaccination centers, uh, the vaccination clinics that are closest to you, and you will be able to go in and make a reservation. And so all that communication is coming. Uh, as the plan rolls out, we could not lay out the age group, quite frankly, uh, because of the instability of the supply of vaccines. But as I said, third week in March, we start with those 80 years old and older. 15th of April, it'll be 75 to 75 and upwards we'll start with. The first week in May, we'll start with 70 to 75. The first week of June, we'll go, or 70 to 70 and upwards, because there are always some that you would miss. The first week of June, we will be at, uh, what did I say, 65 to 70. And then the first week of July, 60 and upwards from there. So those are the brackets and when we see them going through. We anticipate anticipate if the supply is good, we will be able to start with essential workers the first week in May and continue rolling them out concurrently. And as I said, in the communities disproportionately affected, uh, we're gonna continue rolling really from where we are right now, right out through till the end of the vaccination program. And that includes the indigenous adults in the communities I talked about and the urban indigenous. So there are the dates and times, Laura. And, and yeah, I know people want to know where all the vaccination centers are, but the vast majority of those vaccination centers are still not operating because we're at that different group of the population and we don't have vaccines to put in them to start them up. Next question. From Mike Crowley at CBC News. Please go ahead. Hi, uh, General. Uh, you said that the lack of supply of uh, vaccines uh, up until now was one of the reasons why uh, the um, online booking portal is not being launched until March the, the, the 15th, uh, and that you're furiously working on it now. Can you square that? It doesn't kind of make sense to me because sh shouldn't the province have had this uh, uh, booking portal you know, worked on by now already? Uh, you said that you wanted to have it ready sooner. Uh, other provinces have launched theirs, and in fact, other provinces are starting to vaccinate uh, uh, people in the uh, 80 plus. Uh, age group, and they're all having had the same uh, issues with the uh, vaccine supply. Uh, so thank you for that question. And, and first of all, I obviously was not clear enough when I said that because of lack of vaccine supply, we wouldn't have the online booking system up and the uh, customer service data desk up until 15 March. But actually, we don't need it until 15 March. And the work is uh, pretty much complete. We are going to run a test uh, pilot project on it this coming week to make sure we're ready to go to stress it and we'll be up and operating on the 15th of March but frankly 
We did not need an online reservation system uh, up till now. We, we actually do not need it, as I said, till the 15th of March, and we will have it ready by then. I, I know that I, I you know, watched in general other provinces roll out their vaccination program. Every province is slightly different, and their priorities are slightly different at the front end. The numbers in Ontario uh, are actually staggering in, in the populations that you want to get to. For example, the number of long-term care homes and, and retirement homes. And so we have not gotten to the 80-plus year olds yet. Some of the other provinces have. Uh, it depends on how they're running out their program and what their vaccinations are, uh, what their pr priorities are. So we are in the priorities that we've been directed by the Government of Ontario. We're, we're very comfortable with that. We will be ready the third week of March to start in the age brackets and to work at them as fast as we possibly can. And, and if more vaccines come to Ontario, we'll be able to pull all of those age brackets forward and including be able to pull the essential workers forward also. Thank follow you. Up, follow up. Um, could you um, describe when people who have underlying uh, medical conditions uh, although they might be in younger age brackets, uh, are they also supposed to be a part of uh, phase two? Uh, when will they get a sense of when they're going to be uh, vaccinated? Uh, so th thank you for that question, and it's a great point. Uh, first of all, I, I will not describe that. So we, we had previous direction from the Government of Ontario that as we flow through, those in most vulnerable circumstances, number one priority, healthcare professionals are the second priority, the age bracket starting with 80 and, and over are the third priority. Those in disproportionately affected communities are, are the, the next priority and so therefore the second one in phase two and then essential workers. Inside of those last three priorities, there is a breakdown and a matrix of, of which ones which should go first in the shoot for vaccines. That work is being, is being moved now uh, through cabinet committee into cabinet to give their direction back to the task force on, on when to move it. And so in this next days, we would be able to articulate that. I don't want to do it now because that would be preempting the prerogative of, of Cabinet and, and the Government of Ontario. Next question. I'm Colin DeMello at CTV News. Please go ahead. Hi, good morning, General. Good morning. Uh, I wanted to ask about the, the general timeline beyond uh, the 65 plus population. Is the plan then for the vaccine delivery to be wide open to everyone of the general public, or is the province still going to be moving backwards using age as the determining factor? Uh, thank you. And, and you know something, that's, first of all, that's a ways out there to start with. So there'll be an ongoing discussion as to what is the best way, and so much of it will depend on the vaccine arrival and how many there are. Because we may reach a point, you know, in late summer where the number of vaccines in, coming in are huge and the number of people who have been done in those most vulnerable populations, pretty much that I've talked about here this morning, uh, th that most of those populations have been done and we may be able just to go flat out to the general population. But that's a decision that we actually don't need to take right now. We can take that depending on the vaccine flow, depending on how many people we get vaccinated, particularly in those vulnerable communities uh, where COVID-19 has visited its tragedy most. So, but a great question. We don't need to answer it right now. Uh, early summer, I think, is when we'd be starting to discuss that issue and see if we are, we're getting to a point where we could actually just go straight through the population, which, as I think you would understand, would be the most efficient way of vaccinating across the province when you have large numbers of vaccines. Our challenge now is that we still have relatively small numbers, and we still have large numbers of the, those in most vulnerable circumstances that we want to get a level of protection to that they need from COVID-19. And hence, we have to come at those populations, uh, not sequentially, concurrently, but it's actually a, a, a ponderous, as I said, and a bit of a clumsy time. I'd love to get to a point down the road here where we could just have so many vaccines coming in and the vulnerable taken care of that we could just give, offer the opportunity in Ontario to everybody over 16 to come and get a vaccine and, and our mass vaccination centers would roll through them in a way that would be quite incredible. Thank you for the question. Follow up. So the federal government says that they're planning to, or they would like to see everyone vaccinated or at least offered a vaccine by September. Can Ontario realistically, given what you're saying here today, uh, meet that expectation? Will, is Ontario um, committing at all to having all people offered a vaccine by September? Everything is vaccine dependent. Uh, everything is vaccine dependent. So if we get the vaccine, we, if we get the vaccines in the appropriate amounts, we can get them into the arms of the people of Ontario. And so everything is vaccine dependent. Uh, you know, uh, the federal government has been saying you can depend on the supply of vaccines now. It, it's stable and here are the numbers that are coming or more are gonna come later. Well, we're gonna take them at their word and you know, starting from here on out, 
We're not going to be saving in our freezers that second needle, for example. We're going to be keeping an eye on it coming in the shipment next week, the week after, but we're going to start putting needles in arms even faster now going forward here because we're going to take them at their word that the vaccines are going to arrive. Uh, I, I'd love to say, yeah, you know, by Labor Day weekend, we're going to have every single person in Ontario who is eligible and who wants a vaccine to have one. Uh, I'm a little bit reluctant to do that because it depends on the arrival of those vaccines. I say this, if the vaccines arrive and the numbers required, we'll get them into the arms of the people of Ontario. Next question. From Natasha McDonald at Radio Canada. Please go ahead. Hi. Um, will the French version of the online booking portal be launched at the same time as the English one? And will call centers have enough French staff to avoid being on hold for hours on end? Uh, yes and yes. I'll, I'll answer in more detail. I had a demonstration last night of the online booking system uh, along with many of our team and actually I was, I was, I was really impressed and, and quite literally you go and pick your language and if you're English everything then flows English including the email that you will get back to confirm your, your, online, uh, your appointment that you booked online and if you select French everything that you see from there on in through the portal through the system is French and the email that you would get back to confirm your appointment will also be in French. So, so that's going to work on the call uh, customer service desk. You know, customer service desks can get overwhelmed. We're going to put a large number of operators in there when we go live on, uh, on the 15th of March. And I, you know, talked to the premier ministers and, and deputy ministers last night and we're all agree we're going to surge up on 15 March to a huge number of operators, the maximum number we can put in there and work it. And then if they're not needed, we'll ramp back down, as opposed to starting with a ramp, a, a, a lower level and ramp up. Uh, we're going to do everything that we possibly can to be successful on the 15th of March. I'm going to say again, on the 15th of March, when we go live, unless you're 80 years old or older, unless you're the agent or a family member acting for somebody who's 80 years old or older, please do not go to the call center. Please do not go online. On the online system, you will be blocked from going into the system and going through it. And in the call center, you'll simply be tying up a line that we need to help somebody out who can't go online or who needs that conversation. Thank you for the question. Follow up. Uh, in the U.S., media outlets have widely reported that online booking has prevented some seniors and lower, lower income folks from getting fair access to vaccination. So I'm wondering what is being done to avoid that in Ontario. Uh, thank you. Again, a strength of our public health units. So the second part first of, of uh, some of the socioeconomic uh, disproportionately affected communities. Uh, our public health units know those communities. They know that they've got to go out to those communities and, and literally in cases knock on doors. And I've talked to the uh, medical officers of health, a lot of them on exactly this. They know their populations. They in fact have uh, many of their leaflets for what, is, what support is available medically and, and for the vaccine itself. Uh, in many different languages based on those communities, not just French and English. So that's an incredibly important part of it. Uh, secondly, we'll bring mobile vaccination clinics to many of those communities so that, you know, they're not going to, you know, I've been told by many of the medical officers of health, again, who know them, who know these populations, that many of these folks, they will not come to, uh, for example, mass vaccination clinics. And you really have to go there, almost like going into a long-term care home. You really have to go there. And there are a variety of ways that the public health units have planned for a mobile vaccination clinic, literally a bus that stops and becomes a vaccination clinic, uh, a mobile vaccination clinic where you take a team out to a community center and establish it right there, right in the middle of a neighborhood and a variety of other things, including going into a building uh, where a significant percentage is that uh, population and being able to establish a vaccination clinic right there in the lobby or the, or the common room of those buildings. And so all of those things are being worked and looked at by the public health units and they're prepared for it. And as, again, as they said, you know, we do vaccines. Vaccines are us. The flu vaccine, that's how they had to work it. They've established those relationships. They have the leaflets. They knock on the doors. They communicate with them in a whole variety of ways that simply you could not do at the provincial level, I don't believe, or cer certainly could not do it efficiently. What we will do our best to do is to support them in that communication in a variety of ways. Next question. From Rob Ferguson at the Toronto Star. Please go ahead. Hi, General. Uh, yesterday, the, uh, the minister was saying pretty soon uh, that everybody would know when and how they're getting a vaccination. So I, I don't really see this as fitting that bill. I, I know you've asked, been asked a bit of a, uh, about this before, but why can't you be more specific now? Certainly a lot of other jurisdictions are. 
Well, I'm as specific in the age groups as I think we can be. You know, starting uh, the third week of March, we are going to start with 80 year olds and plus. The 15th of April, we will bring into that shoot the 75 year olds and upwards. On the 1st of May, we will bring in uh, 70 to 70, 70 and upwards. And on the 1st of June, we'll bring in 65 and upwards. And on the 1st of May, or first, uh, sorry, the first week of July, we'll bring in 60 and upwards. And that's when they will get their opportunity uh, to, prior to that, to make a reservation online or through the call center and, and be able to get their vaccination and make the reservation at the se same time for the second needle. So I don't think I can be any clearer than that. We anticipate starting with essential workers, but again, the breakdown inside of the essential worker classification, that priority has got to be, uh, first of all, the recommendations to cabinet have occurred or are occurring, and cabinet and the government has to make their final decision on that, and then we can talk about that specific part of it. But we do not anticipate being able to start with essential workers until the 1st of May. You'll get your vaccination either in mass vaccination clinics or in pharmacies or possibly in vaccination clinics that will be put together by the uh, primary care professionals who will come together in a, in a mini clinic to vaccinate not only their patients, but probably others. Uh, the primary care professionals, I've talked to several of the groupings over this past week to say, you've got to wrap your arms around the medical officers of health and the public health units, offer up what you can do. Vaccines will not go into doctor's offices in the near future. Simply the handling characteristics of both Pfizer and Moderna and the scarcity of them do not permit that to occur. Uh, those uh, primary care professionals, they want to participate, they want to do things, and they want to offer up SWAT teams to our public health units and indeed have to go into long-term care homes to go in some of those populations. And so that's how they will get their vaccines. And all of those things will be close to where you live based on your postal code. So I'm not sure how much more specific I can be. We will reach out publicly from this podium with public service advisories, with actually leaflets that will go out to the age bracket saying, okay, in the next two weeks, you know, starting at this specific date, for example, you will be able to go online and you will be able to reserve an appointment for your vaccine. And if you cannot do that or somebody cannot do it for you, you will be able to go to the customer service desk and reserve that appointment also. I'm not sure how much more specific uh, we would have to be for the people of Ontario to take that know when the date is when they can go online and book an appointment in one of those uh, kinds of clinics that will be very close to their home. So Rick Hillier, when 65 year old plus is, comes, comes available, uh, and I, I, I hear from this podium, through you, through a variety of communications messages, including public service announcements, I hear that for example, on the 15th of May, I can now start reserving, I can go online and reserve my appointment, I will do so and when I put my name in and my HOIP card, and my postal code, whatever clinics are operating close to me in Ottawa will pop up and I'll get an opportunity to reserve my appointment. If that's Shoppers Drug Mart on 10th line or if that's the Sir Will, Laurie, uh, Sir Will uh, School uh, with a mass vaccination clinic, then those will pop up. I would be able to book and at the same time make my second appointment. Follow up. Okay, thank you for all that clarification, General. Uh, and just um, on... on um, I must be losing my touch. Huh? last week about people over 80 would be called by their family doctor. What is that no longer happening then? Uh, or? No, I, listen, I talked to the, uh, many of the organizations, obviously not all of the family doctors, and said like, reach out to your patients. Uh, and, and most of them in, in seconds can pull down their list of patients, you know, whether it's 30 or 40 or 50 of them, uh, uh, the number of patients in, in seconds and know them, and they can reach out and say, you know, give them that message. Hey, uh, you know, starting, fifth, starting that third week of March, we're going to be able to get appointments for you and and you're going to know and so you know we can help you i, I commend also I, I think i said this earlier church groups community groups family members i read an article yesterday or the day prior in the new yorker about a lady in new york city who, who a young lady who took it as her mission in life to become what she called a millennial concierge and she looked after about a hundred people in her extended family who could not get to the online booking services different ones in new york state and she actually worked to get them the reservation and the appointment for their vaccine. And I would simply say, do the same here. Let's show our generosity of spirit in Ontario, and let's look after that age group and make sure they got their appointments. The public health units, uh, we talked to them yesterday about this, and they are already reaching out to them and figure that by the 15th of March, they will have wrapped their arms around almost everybody in that age group. Let's double bank, let's triple bank, and let's make sure we look after them and help them get that appointment in either a mass vaccination clinic or a pharmacy or a doctor-run vaccination clinic 
uh, close to where they live. Last question. From Graham Richardson at CTV Ottawa. Please go ahead. Uh, just following up on that, just so for, in the interest of crystal clarity, um, doctors, family doctors, will not be delivering shots. Family doctors are being asked to message to their patients about how to get the shots. Do I have that right? Uh, Graham, no, you do not. Family doctors will deliver shots. They will not do it in their own offices earlier on in this vaccination program. Uh, the way the vaccine is, the way it has to be handled, and, and the spoilage that you would get trying to do that would be overwhelming, and we don't want to do it. The doctors understand that. I walked through it over this past week with several groups, as I mentioned already, and what we're asking those pr uh, primary care professionals, in including obviously the doctors, is to reach out to your patients, to reach out to the public health unit, to become part of a vaccination clinic with that public health unit, and many of them are already doing that, and then be, have your patients come to that clinic and to that public uh, vaccination clinic and be able to give them the vaccination yourself or one of your colleagues. I know I talked to Dr. Vera Etches in uh, Ottawa, the medical officer of health for Ottawa Public Health. I talked to her way back in December and she said, you know, during the flu campaign, uh, yeah, we had mass vaccination sites, we had the pharmacies working, but we had many of the doctors of the family doctors in Ottawa come together at the mass vaccination clinic bring their patients to that clinic and be able to vaccinate in them in that efficient way and still maintain, still maintain that really great doctor-patient relationship. And so, yep, uh, they are going to administer vaccines. We need them. We want them. We want them to be those SWAT teams that go out there. And maybe when AstraZeneca shows or maybe another vaccine shows and is approved and ready for use and we have big numbers, then maybe we could go back to vaccines in doctor's offices also. Follow up. The other question I have is, in Ottawa, we're also hearing in places like Guelph and Waterloo area, uh, they're already doing online bookings in the Guelph area. Um, and Ottawa has just announced they're going to go into high-risk communities 88, age 80 plus starting March 1. So if I understand this correctly, um, uh, these health units don't necessarily have to wait for the online booking. Um, they can go ahead and move into these these groups if they're ready. Is that correct? Uh, Graham, what we have said to them, and when you've made all reasonable efforts to get the priorities above that group, then you can start with what you've just described, say the high-risk 80-plus uh, year olds uh, in your area. And so Ottawa, as an example, uh, have made tremendous progress at getting the, the long-term care homes done, the high-risk retirement homes, and the elder care facilities. Uh, and, and that's not to diminish what the other public health units uh, have done. But let me just tell you, Ottawa has been lighting the road for so much of Ontario since this vaccination program started. And that's courtesy of the great leadership from Cam Love and Tony DeMonte and Dr. Vera Etches. And so they have a booking system which they've been using all along. They can continue to use that. The Ontario booking system will simply complement that and you can go from one to the other and you won't even notice it. So yeah, we're not having a rigid guideline where you know, you've done all your work but you have some vaccines al allocated to you and therefore because other public health units have not yet been able to do it, you must stop, absolutely not. Thank you. Thanks, Graham. Uh, and let's work together. Let's show that, show that generosity of spirit that Ontario uh, as the people of Ontario have, that the people of Canada have, let's look after there's older populations and let's get them to the vaccination sites and let's do this for the benefit of all of us. Thank you so much.